Well, hello, friend. My name is Ron. I am from cammastery.com, where you can go to learn how to make great videos with Camtasia. It's Sunday, and usually on Sundays, I like to get together with you and answer some questions that I've gotten throughout the week. That's why we're here. It is time for some cam answers. So today I have a few questions. It's really just two questions that I have, but there are two parts to those two questions, so it ends up being four questions. So the first question we have is about uh, multiple videos and video mats. And then the second question is about uh, somebody who's doing a vlog, uh, video log, and questions about animating images and removing noise from there. So um, thank you for joining me. If I haven't said that already, let's jump right in. So let's look at that first question. It really had two parts. And the first uh, part of this was asking about when I did a recording uh, or a live session. And it says, how do you do the two rectangle boxes, one for video, one, uh, is it one for video, one for your talking head? Thanks. And then there was a um, maybe a, a question before that or after that that asked about track mats. So let's talk about that. So we'll head over to Camtasia. And this is really what um, the person was looking for. He was saying, hey, look, I see you had a video here. I'll just play through this real quick. Here I am with a video. There's a video here. How did I build this out? So part of what I did was I'm for my live feeds, I'm using... Um, uh, vmix as the uh, what do I want to say the streaming software so in this I'm using vmix to build all this but I could build all of this in Camtasia as well so let me show you the elements I used to build this so I'm just going to go out here a little further off to the right on my timeline and the first thing I have is I purchased this asset from the Envato elements uh, Envato marketplace and it's just this looping background. So you can see here, you know, it's just a nice background. And so this is the first part. Um, actually, I'm gonna put this, I'll put this here and I'll just build on top of it. Uh, the next thing I have then is I created an overlay. So I'm gonna bring this in and I'll drag this out as well. And so you can see, uh, here's the overlay in this format. Uh, the example I showed you before was the other format. So if I spin it around the Y axis, there we go, I spun it 180 degrees. Uh, this is the format that it was in before, uh, but if we don't like that, I'll just undo that, bring it back to um, how I often have it. So this is the second element. It's just a, a PNG file that has two rectangles on it. Um, and I created that in uh, GIMP, uh, the free software, free, um, like it's like a free Photoshop. Then I had two more items on top of that, or not actually on top of that, but behind that, so this layer actually goes all the way to the top. So I'm going to put this overlay here at the top, and then I would bring in the two things that I wanted to show. So uh, let's say I have this video piece. So I'm just going to do a split here and move this video piece up here. I think that's just video, right? Yep. And then the other piece is, he mentioned screen recording, so let me just grab part of the screen recording. So let's say this part here. So I'll just do a split and grab this screen recording and drag this up as my other part. All right, so if you wanna have two videos playing simultaneously, what you can do is play them both in parallel. You can see here I have them both in parallel and I'll just uh, split this and delete this last part here. Um, here, like I said, the two videos in parallel what I want is I want this screen recording. Um, I'll just mute both of these, which I often do. There we go. I want the screen recording to fit in this right-hand circle, and then my video, my uh, camera video, to fit uh, cropped into this rectangle on the left. So I, I grabbed this, and I'm just gonna drag this up to uh, right around here, and then drag this part to about here so that it fits just inside. And then I'll just drag it, whoop, undo, control Z, just drag it over. All right, when I go to drag it, it it's gonna grab the overlay, so I'm gonna undo. I'm just gonna hide the overlay. When I'm having a hard time dragging the thing I wanna drag, <laughs> I oftentimes just need to hide that layer and I'll bring that layer back. And that looks pretty good. I can see I need to nudge it just a little bit further to the right. So I'm gonna use the arrow key on my keyboard. I'm gonna tap it a few times. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably good. Seven maybe for good measure. And that's the first part. Then the second part is getting my video where I want. So I will 
again, just resize my video. I'll resize it to the same height there. You can see that the snap lines made it the same height. Uh, again, I'm not going to be able to drag this and move this because of the overlay that's there. So I will just disable the overlay track for a moment. Put this about where I want it to be, somewhere around here. And then I'll re-enable that background part. And then what I want to do is crop it so that we don't see the items here on the side. So I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom out. So I'll just scroll down so that zoomed out. And then the easy way to crop is to use the Alt key. So if I look here at the resizing handles on the left, I see circles. When I hold down the Alt key, it changes to squares. And so now I can just click this and drag inward, and then it cuts off that part of the video. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll click and drag inward. And now I have cropped this. And if I play through, I'll just start here. I'll zoom in. I'll scroll up there on my mouse wheel, and I'll just play through. And you can see me talking. You can see the video there on the other side. And technically, it's a third video here in the background. Now, this isn't perfectly centered. Um, probably what I would do is, is nudge it. Well, I can do that now. Uh, it's still selected, so I'll use the arrow keys and nudge it here to the left till my head is a little bit more centered because you know how I like to have things a little more exact. Hold down the Alt key again, crop this out, and then I'll remove that crop and just stretch that a bit that way. There. So now again, as I play through, I can see video, actually three videos, camera video, screen recording, and then a recorded asset. So that is the first part of the question, which relates to how we got multiple videos on at the same time. You can see in Camtasia, I really had three videos playing all at the same time, all in parallel, and I just positioned them on the screen where I wanted them. Okay, now the second part of the question uh, that he asked was in regard to mats. So I could have used a mat. So let's go back to Camtasia and take a look at how we might be able to use a mat to accomplish the same thing. So I'm going to copy this element here. So Control-C to copy. I'll bring it over here, Control-V to paste. So here it is. Um, it's cropped and it's a little bit smaller. So I'll just stretch this. Whoop, Control-Z. I wanted to use Alt here. Let's, there we go. Use Alt to drag this back, drag this back, and then I can resize. Uh, actually, I can just go in here and make it 100%. There we go. Perfect. So now I have the video and the question is, you know, could I have used a mat? Yes, um, a common uh, a common way that we put this um, on, a, on a video is to use a rectangle. And you could see that we could just crop to get a rectangle. So what a lot of people want is for their mat to use a circle for their talking head. So what I'll do is I'll go over to annotations and I don't see any circles here by default, but what I can do is I can go to all. Um, and when I go to all, and scroll down. Oh, actually, I want to go over here to the shapes. And then in the shapes, I see this yellow circle. So this yellow is a perfect circle. That's great. I'm going to drag that over top of my video. And then what I would do is resize this circle um, to however big I want it on the screen. So let's say I wanted my picture in the lower right. Okay, so I'm going to drag it down here to the lower, I'm sorry, yeah, lower right. And if I try to resize this, I'm like, oh, whoops, I distorted it into an oval. So I'll do control Z to undo that. In order to keep the same dimensions, the same ratio, the same proportions of length to width and keep this as a perfect circle, I'm going to hold down the shift key as I drag that same thing. So now notice as I drag with the shift key, I can't make it an oval even if I wanted to. It stays the same size, right? Or it seems it stays the same proportions. So maybe I want it to be about that big in the lower right. Okay. So now what I want to do is I would take my face here and I would position it where I want. So that's not nearly small enough. So I need to make it much smaller and put it right about here. That's my guess. That would be my head. Let's make it a little smaller even. Make sure that that fits in there. Something like that. Then all we need to do here is we need to make this track a mat. And so that was part of the question. Would you make it a mat? Yes, I could do that. And the way to do that is to right click the eyeball icon that's here on in the lower left. And let me just zoom in so you can see this. So when we look here on the left, we have these three icons. Um, and what I want to do is right click the eye icon. 
And when I do that, I see the option to do an alpha. And so this alpha will be the track mat that was a part of the question. So I'll just say alpha. And now you can see there it is. There's Ron's head sitting there inside that video or inside that circle, I should say. So if I just play through this, there I am talking, I'm looking around, I'm saying whatever, and my head is just there. Now, I'm going to undo these last couple of things. So Control Z, uh, actually, let me, yeah, I'm gonna undo all that. So just bring it all back to how we started here. So there it is in the middle. Um, oftentimes, what people prefer to do is start with this larger screen and then kind of zoom in and have that crop down. They like to animate it. Now, you don't have to. You can just cut right to it, um, and that's fine. But I, I like this effect. I think it's a neat effect, and people ask me about this as well. So I want to share with you how I would animate it from this rectangle down to the circle. Okay. So we're starting in this position. And what I'm going to do, actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to control C to copy both of these. And then I'm going to control Y. And I'm going to go right back to everything I just did. So control Y, control Y, control Y. Okay, this is the end result that I want. So I want, I kind of want to hold on to that. And I'm going to come back, going to come back to that in just a minute. So I'm going to, oh, I forgot I was zoomed out. Sorry about that. Um, so what I want to do here is I've copied both of these. Let me right click and take this off, uh, take it back to where we were originally. Um, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste those two. This is our starting position for both of these. And the way I want to do this is I want to take the circle and make it so big that it covers the entire screen and then make it smaller and drag it down. Well, yeah, it, to me, the lower right is down here to you. The lower right is down here, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Start with this huge circle and bring things down. So let me show you how we do that inside Camtasia. So my starting point is with this circle. Again, I want it to stay proportionate. I want it to stay perfect as a circle instead of distorting like this. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag this up and hold down the shift key and drag this down and it's still not big enough. So I wanna go use my mouse scroll wheel to scroll down and zoom out even further and then continue to hold down shift and drag this up here. Continue hold down shift, drag it down here and there we go. Now I want to center this. There we go. So now it's covering the entire thing. So if at this point I go down here to the lower right and I do the same thing where I do an alpha, then I just see the entire video. And let me zoom back out so you can see that. So there's the entire video um, shown instead of just me with the, uh, the talking head like we had before. Okay, so that's, that's the end result that we want. All right, so starting here, um, what I want to do is animate this down. So I'm going to select both of these items and I'm going to do a shift A to add an animation. Let me just zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. Now I have my animation set to be half a second. You might want them a little longer, like one second. Um, so let's do that and then I will bring them in. And what I want is I want my shape to zoom down until it is this size and my video talking head to do the same thing. So I'm gonna right click the shape. This is the end result I want. I want to copy the properties of where this circle is. And then here afterward, after this animation, I wanna right click and I wanna to paste to those properties. Okay, so we're gonna see if that worked. I'm not 100% sure that that worked. I don't know that it went, I think it just changed position actually. But this should work fine here on the video. So I'm gonna right click the video and I'm going to copy these properties and come over here to the end of the video, right click and paste those properties. Okay, so this worked, it brought me down here. Um, what it didn't do with the circle though, if I select the circle, it's still rather large, not a problem. I'm going to hold down the shift key again and just make this smaller and move it over here and make it smaller. Get it somewhere in that ballpark of where we want and now, something like that. All right, so let's look at the animation. So we start here, and I'm going to use the, uh, the less than and greater than keys, like as arrows. It's really the comma key and the period key to move one frame to the right and left. So notice here, the video is getting smaller, and it's coming in, and it's getting more and more circular. I don't know if you can quite see the circle, but it is getting circular as it comes in tighter and tighter, and there it is.
Now, one other thing I would probably do on these, I, I think on something like that, I probably want a linear, um, a linear animation rather than the default uh, easing that comes in. Um, so let's just walk through this again and see. There we go. Yeah, I like that a little better. So this comes in, I can see the circle starting a little bit better, a little faster. Yes. Okay. So now when I play through this, you can see I'm talking, brings me down here, and then it would reveal something behind me, right? I would have, I wouldn't just have a black screen. I would have some other screen behind me. Um, what a good way to do this after I use a mat like this and use the alpha is I'll select both of these items and I will right click and group them or use control G. And then I can disable this track here off to the left. And again, zooming in, if I want to turn off the alpha, I can just go to none. And now that alpha is turned off. So now that I have this grouped item, I can put something behind it. Um, and if I had, where's my screen recording? If I had a screen recording behind it, like this one. Um, actually, let me go a little further to the left. I think I have a screen recording here. Yep. So I will just split this, grab it, and drag it here where that group is. And then I'm talking, I'm talking, it shrinks me down, and here I am talking to the camera in a circle with another video behind. So again, we have multiple videos that we're showing um, at the same time, one that's a camera video, one that is a screen recording, all displayed in parallel, and we can use mats to do that. So that's the first question I wanted to get through. And now let's jump over to the second question. And that was, uh, there were two parts to this. This was the second part uh, asking about the, there's a buzzing noise. So let me get to that in a moment. The first part of the question, which I didn't happen to capture here um, uh, in the video or in the uh, PowerPoint was about her vlog. So Barb is a student of mine. Hi, Barb. Uh, she has created a vlog and wanted some input on things to do. And so one of the things I suggested to do was to add some pictures rather than just a talking head like you see right now with me. I said it helps if you add other things, other elements to it. Uh, one of the other other elements that I said to add was something like a lower third. And so let me just show you here. Um, we'll do the same thing. Let me find, let me grab this guy one more time, copy and paste, and we'll bump him back up to 100%. If you are on the screen and you want a lower third, I recommend centering that wherever you are. So if you're a little bit off to the left, put it a little to the left. If you're off to the right, put it to the right. Here I'm in the center and I want my lower third. Um, actually, ah, you know what? I'm going to choose a different one. I do not see the one I'm looking for, though. <laughs> I thought I had another one in here. OK, must have that in a different version. Let me see, name, nope, because this, I think this just comes in, yeah, from this. This is designed specifically for the lower left corner. OK, I'm going to use a default uh, Camtasia asset for a lower third for the name. And so if we have something like, I don't know, this one's fine, electric box. So if we play through this, we see this appears and it's off to the right, uh, or I should say, my, it's off to my right, it's off to the left. I would try and center this information right here on me so that it comes in and when you see the name, it's there below me. So uh, the other thing I would do is I'd make this smaller. It looks like it's a little bigger than I want. And so whoop, undo. I would do something more like this to have that logo there to the left and then, you know, the info just after that. Okay, so that's number one. If you're putting up a lower third, I recommend putting it, centering it. The next part was about images. And so what I did was I went to Barb's um, video and I played through. And the suggestion that I made is for us to do, there are usually two things we want to do with images. We'll either pan, right? So we'll go like from side to side, or we'll zoom in or out. It's usually one of those two. Or you could do a combination of those. You could pan and zoom at the same time. So um, so here with Barb, uh, here she has a picture of 
herself and her husband. And so I I thought, you know, the focus of this is on the people. So let's zoom in. Let's let's kind of get closer to them. And so I'll play through this and I just have this nice slow zoom. So it starts off full screen. And so that's what I would recommend starting off full screen. And then, like I said, as you play through, it's a very slow, subtle zoom in uh, until she's on talking about um, her and her husband, right? So just, and all I did, if you look at the animation here, I started at 100% and then here at the end, I made it to, I went to 105%. Okay, so just like this 5% increase is just a nice subtle zoom and it adds a little bit of animation to a still video or still uh, image. Okay, so then the next thing that she talked about was uh, her farm. And I thought, okay, she's talking about lots of acreage on her farm. And so here's something where I, in this picture, the idea is I want to capture the vastness of it. So in here, I started off, I actually zoomed in 125%. So I'm zoomed into the picture. And what I want to do to help convey how large this is, is if you look here, I actually zoom out until it gets to 100%. Okay, so there's there's the zoom. And, and I, again, intentionally am zooming out because I wanna show you, wow, this place is huge. So, you know, if I had a higher resolution, I might even just zoom into this one part here, uh, just right in the center. Uh, so that could even be, you know, 200%, I don't know, 150% or, or yeah, probably closer to 200%. And then over a few seconds, pan out until we see the whole, you know, until we see more of the acreage that, that Barb has. So again, just a nice slow uh, zoom as we're coming out of that. Uh, again, on both of these, uh, I mentioned this before, if we look down here at the bottom, I'm gonna right click and look at enable easing. And what I chose on both of these was linear. I, I like linear more than auto in a lot of cases, not in all, but in these cases, I wanted it to be, you know, like a, a steady zoom in rather than if you if I left it at the auto, uh, what it does is it zooms a little bit faster at the beginning, uh, or sorry, a little bit faster in the middle. So it's like almost nothing, and then it goes zooms faster, and then almost nothing again. And I just don't care for that whenever I'm doing a, a slow zoom. Instead, I like it linear so that when I play through, it's consistent. Just a nice, slow zoom in. And again, you decide how much you want to zoom in. I liked 5%. I felt like that was good, um, you know, a good reference. And then, like I said, for this to show vastness, I'm zooming out. And then on this video, or on this image, um, she's talking about the, uh, the animals that she has in her herd. And in the herd, we can see the herd is looking off to our left. And so I thought, well, to animate this, I would probably want to make it feel like that herd is moving to the left. And so the way I did that was to slide it to the right. Okay, so here, just this nice, this slow pan to the right, which makes it look like the lambs are moving off to the left or the sheep are moving off to the left, right? So um, trying to think if there's anything else there. So one of the other things that I could have done here was used uh, a little bit more zoom. So you can see, um, you know, I start here, my scale, oops, let me zoom back out. My scale here in the upper right is 110%. And then when I go, you know, over here to the, or off to the left, it was 110. Over here to the right, it's 110. And so there's no zooming as I do this, uh, but maybe I would want to. Uh, it, perhaps I, and again, in order to show maybe more of what's happening with the herd, I might zoom in here to 125 um, and take this all the way to the left. And then as I play through, the herd is moving to the left and I'm zooming out at the same time. So you can see that there's more and more heads of uh, sheep here as an example. Okay, so that's, those are the ways that I would animate those different things, zooming, panning, and panning and zooming at the same time. It's a good way for us to add a little bit of mo motion, a little movement into our videos. Uh, so if we do have still images, um, this uh, when we animate these like this, uh, it's often called the Ken Burns effect because Ken Burns uh, made some amazing sum. He made pretty much all of the amazing documentaries, not all of them, but uh, he is definitely the docu uh, documentary king. And that's what he would do. He would find something, he would zoom into it, he would pan and maybe zoom back out and go to different parts of an image. And that motion keeps things moving. It keeps a pace to your video. So again, we could just cut to it, but having just adding a little bit of motion to it uh, adds a lot. 
All right, then the last part of her question was about a buzz. So what I did was I wanted to figure out what was going on with the buzz. So I recorded her screen and I'm gonna cut back over to Camtasia. And so here, you know, so I recorded the video, um, which I don't see here. Let me just drop this up here and it's still not showing, but it should soon. I'm guessing this was happening earlier where it just wasn't playing through. I'm gonna click play. Actually, it doesn't matter. This is just audio. This or is this just the audio? <laughs> it might be. This might be the audio that I captured first. Okay. So what I was able to do was I was able to look at this audio and add an effect to it. So what I did was I went to audio effects. Um, I went to noise removal and I dragged it down. And so you can see this if I expand this. Let me zoom in here and show you. If I expand this track, you can see. Well, if I go to the left you can see that it says noise removal. So that was the thing that I added. And yeah, okay, so it does say system audio. So this is just an audio track. When I did this, um, actually, let me let me just repeat it for you because I wanna show you, let's just, uh, I'm gonna use control end to get to the end of my video here. And I'm gonna drag that same audio in. So I see I have my screen recordings, my videos, my images, and here down at the bottom is the audio with the buzz. So let's zip over here. And uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is, I'm not sure that you can see the buzz. There's a little bit down here at the bottom. Um, I'm going to expand this track. And now you should be able to see here at the beginning before the audio was recorded, there's literally nothing here at the beginning. That's, I clicked record and then like a second in is when the audio starts. So now in these places here where, the, where the, that there should be no audio, you can see that there's this low level of something. And that's the buzz that Barb was talking about. So um, let me see, let me see if I can zip this up. Yeah, there we go. I could also just right click and make it a maximum height. So you can minimize and maximize these tracks if you want. So that's what Barb wants to get rid of is whatever this buzz is here at the bottom. Okay, so let me zoom back out. What I would do is jump over to audio effects and grab noise removal and drag that in here. Now, when I drag that in, I actually don't see any change. If you look at the audio, it doesn't look like it, it changed hardly at all. And so what I did was I went to the section that I knew was just the buzzing noise. And I'm gonna zoom way in on this. So here, so from here to here, I mean, maybe even, I'm not sure there's like a tick or a bump or something there, but maybe just this part here has the buzz. And then what I did was I went up here to the upper right and I clicked on analyze. And so when I said analyze, it was able to go through and find that buzz, and then it should be able to apply it to the entire clip. Now, what's crazy is that I did that one time, it worked perfectly, and I was like, great. And I tried to repeat the process and it didn't work. And so I brought the brought video in and I tried it with the video and it didn't work. I thought, well, let me close the, the program and open it again. Um, and that didn't work. I tried a new project. Well, yeah, at first I tried a new project and that didn't work. And then I thought, let me just close out of Camtasia and bring it back up and it didn't work. I'm not sure why it didn't work. I think this is a great thing for, for TechSmith to investigate. However, I did come up with a solution and that is to not use Camtasia. If there is some serious noise reduction that you need, instead of using Camtasia, I would use Audacity. So let me just show you real quick how I would do this in the program called Audacity. So I'll jump back over to my computer I have Audacity loaded. So if you look, uh, it's Audacity is a free audio program. Uh, let me see if I, nope, that's not what I wanted. I thought it would, I wanted to do about, there we go. So this is the name of it. You can see uh, it's, you know, like audio uh, for Audacity and there's the logo. So when you want to download it, you can do the same. Again, it's a free bit of software. So I downloaded Audacity, um, well, a long time ago, but what I wanna do is use that noise removal. So the next thing I did was I went into Camtasia and I want to just capture the audio from Camtasia. So what I would do, um, now I do, you know that I already have the audio file by itself. That's, it's called Barb Buzz. Um, but instead, let's assume that you have a video and you want to pull the audio out of that um, so here is the screen recording. I'm going to drag this down here and you want to capture the audio from this. You would just select the entire 
section here that you want. Um, right click. I want to produce this timeline selection as, and then you can go in and you can choose audio for the, the type. Now I'm going to show you here if I go next, um, it does show me the M4A audio. Um, that's fine. You can use that with Audacity, but uh, it requires extra downloads for you to have it to work with Audacity. So instead, what you can do is go up to export and say export audio only. And so in here, by default, it comes up with the M4A format. And instead, we want it to be the WAV format. So we're going to say that this is the Barb Buzz audio. And again, make sure it's in WAV format. That's, that's a higher quality anyway. I'll say save. It takes a few seconds. Now I have that audio by itself. And then what I want to do is drag that into the uh, Audacity. So I'm going to go back to Audacity, jump here, just grab the Barb Buzz WAV file and drag it in. And so similarly, we can see that there's nothing here. Let me zoom in up here so you can see this. So this first part of the WAV file, it's completely flat. It's thin. But then we can see there it's not completely thin here and it's not completely thin here or here. There's a lot of buzz here. There's a lot of buzz here. So what I want to do is I want to find where that buzz is. And I can zoom in and out as well if I want to. I'm using, so now I'm holding down the control key and I'm using scroll up, scroll up, scroll up on my scroll wheel. And I'm just going to click and drag. And so this is the the place where I know I have the buzz sound all isolated by itself. So it's not Barb talking and the buzz at the same time. It's just the buzz. And that's what we want to remove. So I select this and then I go to effect noise reduction. And then here we have to start with get noise profile. So get noise profile is basically training audacity to say, here is a section of the video or excuse me of the audio that I don't want anymore. Find this, listen to this piece and filter that out. All right, so that's what we have to do. We basically train it first, and then we apply it to the entire thing. All right, so back over to Audacity. I'm going to click, at, you know, I went to Effect Noise Reduction. I'm going to say Get Noise Profile. And so it just learns it in a second. And then what I want to do is make sure that everything is selected. And so just like in most programs, I can use Control A to select all, uh, or I could go to Select All here as well in the menu at the top. And now with the entire audio selected, I want to apply that effect. So I'll go to Effect, Noise Reduction, and then I can just click OK. Now I will mention that when I did this the first time, it worked well with the default settings. Um, so you'll, depending on what you're trying to remove, you might have to adjust the default settings. For me, I found that the better application of this was instead of using the 12 decibels that it comes up by default, was to change it to, it was like 16 or 18 decibels was better. So if we look back at Camtasia or at Audacity, it says here in the center, noise reduction in decibels, it's, it defaulted to 12. And like I said, I tried, I'm pretty sure I tried 18. I felt like that was better. And then when I click OK, it does the whole thing. And now look at that, that there's almost nothing there on that line. So what it did was it was able to remove all of that, those tones throughout the entire audio. Now that it's done, we want to export this and bring it back into Camtasia. So to do that, we would just go to File. Uh, you might want to save it if you want, but you don't have to. You would just go to Export. Then you could export it, you know, as a wave. And so this, we want to call it Barb No Buzz because we've removed the buzz. Um, we'll leave it as a wave file. We'll put it in. That folder that we used before, where was that folder? Let's copy that location. Come back over here, paste it. I think I can paste it. Maybe not. No, I guess I can't. Can't paste. Can I paste it down here? Let me try that. Home, paste, slash. I think that works. Click OK. Now this might take a little while to export. Um, did that actually work? I'm not sure that it did. It went so fast that I don't believe it actually happened. Barb no buzz. There it is. It is absolutely there. Okay. So then we're going to grab that and we're going to drag it back into Camtasia. So let's do that. Barb no buzz. We're going to bring it over here, put it in this nice tall, um, nice tall level 
There we go. Ah, and then I just need to raise that gain and that should be better. Let's zoom in. Yes. So now when I look here, I see almost nothing in that area. Whereas before when I was looking, I see this little bit of buzz throughout. All right. So that is what I had to share with you today. If you have questions, be sure to drop those in the chat at this point. I didn't see any questions when I jumped over. Nope, no questions at this time. So that's great. If you do have questions, make it quick. Um, so I just wanted to share with those things with you. And I, I, there's one other little thing that I want to, I kind of want to tease you uh, about. So there's a, a project that I'm working on. Um, and what I wanted to do was just give you a little taste of what I'm working on. I'll, I'll give you more information about it next, uh, probably the next couple weeks. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Barb's uh, picture here. And I want to play one part of this for you. Let's zoom to the whole thing. And I'm going to zoom in. Let's see here. We're really close to this. All right. So here, I just want to play through this. So you saw that when we played through, you know, I, I zoomed out. And this, this animation or whatever, this, um, let's go one more frame to the left there. That that animation, I think, you know, in my opinion, that looks good as it stands, right? So we play through and it's just a little bit more intriguing to move it rather than have it as a static image. So the thing that I've been working on is, um, I'm just going to show you, I'll just preview this. So let me play through one more time. Just hit play, the space bar, play through. You're like, yep, that's fine. So now I've added, you can see I've added a track and let me turn that off and or it was, it was being hidden and now I'm, I'm making it available. So now let me play through and notice what's happening here. So did you see that? It looks, it almost looks like a video, right? Like I'm playing through and it's like, oh, the sun is kind of, you know, it's kind of like shining or whatever there and on the left. And so, like I said, there's this other project that I'm working on um, that uses this element and dozens of other elements um, that can add even more of an effect to your to your videos. So um, I'll play through that one more time because I think it looks pretty cool. You know, this animated thing where, you know, this light is kind of shining and, you know, it's like it gets a little brighter, you know, like almost like the camera is moving and letting in more sunlight. So that's one of the things I'm working on. Again, just a little teaser. I'll tell you more about that next week and probably even more the week after that. But I think that is all for today. Let me just check one more time for questions. Nothing in the live chat for questions. So thank you again very much for joining me. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I hope you've learned something. And if you have questions that you would like me to answer, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer those in upcoming videos. Again, my name is Ron from Cam Mastery. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in another video. So long.